Welcome to yet another unboxing video. Got uh, five or six items of interest here, so let's get to it. First one, I think, is something for that Capehart TV that I recently got working. If you recall, it's missing a bunch of knobs from it. Video camera member contacted me and he said he had a number of Cape Hard knobs and picked out a couple that looked like they would go well with the set. So here we are, shading and balance. So I've got a channel knob and a volume knob, and they were originally metallic, some sort of metallic coating on plastic, which has since worn away. Well, they would have looked something like this when they were new. Which really just leaves the Capehart logo nameplate that covers up some of the center controls. Hopefully someday I will come across one of those. I'll show you how those look on the chassis in a moment. Meanwhile, let's move on to the next package. Which I believe was an eBay purchase I just stumbled across. Well, maybe not. No, this might actually be something I actually knew about for a while. Just never got around to clicking the button. I think this is an original store advertisement for that Admiral Remote Control TV picked up last year. Nope. Yep. So it's the first time. This was a, something I stumbled across on eBay. This is an original Philco publication for uh, alignment techniques featuring the Philco 7008, which I would really like to get someday. I've had my chance to get a couple, but they just weren't in very good condition. What this is, it's an all-in-one sweep alignment generator. So you got your sweep generator, you got your marker generator, and a built-in display, built-in oscilloscope, and a rather compact cabinet. The reason they're able to do that is the CRT swings. It swings 90 degrees, so when it's folded up, it kind of swings in this way, so the cabinet isn't all that deep. And when you want to use it, it swings out and sticks out the back a few inches. I just one on eBay right now in Florida, but it looks a little rough. So I think I'll wait till a nicer one comes along. The other reason I wanted to get it is that they have specific instructions on some of the models that I have. I do believe. So, uh, yeah, I've got a... Uh, a 491040 listed right down here. And I think they also have the early 50 models, yeah. Um, I've also got a 50T uh, 1401 and a 1403, I think. And a uh, 50T16 something or another. So four, uh, I have four of the sets that are covered in this and they give specific instructions on how to align it. So I figured this would be a nifty thing to have, especially if I ever get my hands on a 7008. Here are those knobs installed on the Cape Heart chassis. Shading, also known as brightness, and balance, also known as fine tuning. I think this knob was somebody's attempt to recreate the original metallic finish with some gold spray paint. And this one's just completely down to the plastic. So if anybody knows of a reasonably priced outfit that will vacuum deposit metallic finishes on plastic let me know 
Otherwise, I think uh, we'll just leave these alone for now. Okay, moving on. This box feels like it has nothing in it. I think this might be that original store advertisement. I'm just not quite sure why it would come in a box like this. Box. So this is something uh, on clear plastic, you would unroll this and put it in the window. So let's see if I can figure out how to get this open without damaging it. Oh, I see, it's just been rolled up for a very long time. So I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this, but if I had my own museum set up someday, I could put this on the wall above the, the television. Perhaps I could also figure out a way to frame it. So there, that. That is the remote control I'm looking for. That is the remote that fits in the pocket on the side of the TV. Mine came with the remote, but it's for a later model. It's a square body and it doesn't fit into that opening. So I've had my eyes open on eBay and I've put out the word, but I uh, haven't had any luck yet. Hopefully one of these days I will get the correct sonar remote control for that TV. Okay, moving on to the next box. This was kind of a lucky eBay find. I believe I was the only bidder on it. So in the past, these have gone for a fair amount of money. What it is, is an antenna, a vintage antenna. VHF only. Fairly common design for late 40s, early 50s antennas, except for one little difference. This design with the cast iron base and ball and then two rabbit ear elements and a corkscrew in the middle, that's pretty common, but what's not is to have the white ball with the RCA meatball logo on it. Actually, I already have a couple, but they are both this style. The difference being the tips on the what seem to be the more common ones. I mean, they're, they're, they're fairly uncommon to begin with, but of the ones I've seen, they've all had this tip. Whereas this is a little bit different. Don't know which is the earlier style. Also, the style of the balls is slightly different. Aside from the color difference, the logo is a little bit different, the slot openings, the overall molding, including the bolt that holds it together, and the cast iron base is a little different. This has A, B, C, D, E, F. This is one, two, three, four, five, six knobs. Uh, very similar, but again, something slightly different, as is the styling on the sides of the cast iron molding a little bit. So, I don't know which one is earlier. I'm inclined to think it's it's this style, but I really don't know. Either way, they're kind of nifty things to have, especially if you have an RCA TV. And finally, we should have something that actually runs on electricity. Let's see if I can get this to work. This box in the background is not part of this unboxing video. It's actually something I got a while ago. It's a 25 AP4. Picture two. All right, finally, something that actually plugs in. RCA logo on the box, or outside rather, kind of faint. What is it? It is a CRT tester. 
show where I've already got a bunch of these. But I figured it doesn't hurt to have a backup. And this one was rather reasonably priced. And it was one I hadn't seen before. Fairly modern, it's solid state. And it's an RCA, RCA WT-509A. Ooh, the meter cover came off, fine shipping. Looks like it's still moving fine though. And I suspect a smoker owned this. I wanted it to, like I said, it was reasonably priced, uh, looked to be in good condition, it seemed to have all the adapters. I think this is the one I'm most interested in. And Dual decal, the 12 pin, they're so common. This must be their universal adapter. Okay, here's the actual umbilical cord. Adapters plug into. Cool. So, we've got the instructions in the inside lid. Uh, I don't think I need any luck online looking for service info, but I'll take a quick look. And uh, let's pop, get this up on the workbench, pop it open, and uh, check it out see if it actually works. It's tempting to just plug it in and turn it on and see if it works, but I've seen enough nastiness in old equipment to dissuade me from doing that. I've already taken the cover off, just slid it over these hinge pins. And it looks to me like the way you take this apart is to take off some Phillips screws in the back. So, go ahead and do that. I think the whole unit just pulls out from the top. Now, there is another video on YouTube on this tester, which I actually watched before I even bid on it. I think Radio TV Phono Nut had one of these. I was trying to get it to work. I'm hoping this one will work just as it is, or maybe just a simple uh, recapping. Let's get it going. It's got inputs here, 1500 volts and 50,000 volts, used with high voltage probe. This is just a, a way, if you've got a suitable probe, to use this meter, just as a voltmeter. So nothing, nothing special, it's probably just got a resistor inside, a resistor divider. It's up to you to provide a probe and uh, use the existing ground, or you know, connect the common up, lead up to here, and your probe up to here, and you just use this meter. Otherwise, just use your... VTVM or a GMM. May have originally come with probes, I don't know, but I didn't get them if it did. Alright, so there she is. Looks to be in pretty good shape, and it's fused, and the fuse looks to be intact. All original. Two Protection diodes across the meter leads there. Hopefully those are good. Looks like we've got a number of calibration controls. A little transistor. A few diodes. A couple transistors. Well, it's a triac, I guess. And a transistor. Some old caps that are probably pretty leaky. Haven't blown out, though. For microfarad 600 volts, I think I got something I could replace that with on these two guys as well. So I could apply power like with a variac and try to reform these caps, but I know I'm going to replace them eventually anyways. So I'm just going to go ahead and replace those three caps before I even bother messing around with this. I undid four nuts. And the board came right out. Much easier to work on that way. And now we can also get a better look down inside there at that meter, those protection diodes. I went ahead and replaced the electrolytics 
This big guy for microfarad at 600 volts, I'm pretty sure this is used for the remove short and rejuvenation functions. This will be charged up and then discharged across various elements in the CRT depending on which function mode is selected. These guys were 2 microfarad at 400 volts. Didn't have anything that small on hand so I took a couple 4.7s and put them in series which will effectively cut the capacitance in half so they'll be like 2.35 microfarad. Should be close enough. Eventually I'll order up some 2 microfarads and uh, reclaim these guys for other projects. Resistors, they're off a little bit but not that far that I'm concerned so I'm going to go ahead and put this back together and try firing it up. Oh, I need to correct myself earlier. I said the TV radio phone. I did a video on this. No, it was Audubon 5425. Now, unfortunately, I was not able to find any documentation online. I just saw some others for sale on eBay that did include the setup chart and uh, owner's manual. So I'll ask around and hopefully I can come up with one. Otherwise, all I got is what's in the lid here. And uh, there, clearly there are some trimmers inside, so I suspect those need to be tweaked to calibrate it. But uh, we'll just run through the basic functions and see how it, that's how it goes. So I can't locate my tube in the test data chart because I don't have it. But I can pretty well guess that um, the positions, like I'll have the grid... Both grids set to low, grid number one, grid number two. We'll do black and white. And set this for read line. Just curious, even though it's turned off, the meter actually reads. Heater. Ooh, that's annoying. The heater just says A, B, C, D, E, F, G. No numbers. Well, we'll go to the lowest setting and I'll confirm it with a multimeter before I hook it up to a, uh, a tube. And it's quality and activate only, which I'm guessing would be like that. So let's leave it over here. Hmm, and usually there's a push button for the activate procedure. At least it's written on here. Set heater to next highest position so you roast the heater. That's, that's typical. And... Well, the tube to activate for five minutes. Curious. It doesn't seem like there's anything special you do for uh, the activate, other than throw this switch over. Hmm, curious. I guess this just uh, puts higher uh, voltages on it. And you just leave this set for about a minute, and then turn it off, and then recheck the emissions. Anyways, all right, set function switch to read line, and we're looking at the 100 to 140 scale. Oh, down here. Yeah, you can tell that's off because of our, our line. Is um, probably more like 128, and this is indicating that it's like uh, 110 or 108. Okay, so we turn this on to calibrate, and then we rotate to this control so that it falls into one of these ranges. 
green, black, or red. Well, if it was reading right at about 108, it should go into the green. But really, I know I'm more like 125, so it should be the black. But we'll just go to the green for now. So that's down in here. Turned on. It's humming quite a bit. So as soon as I turn the cattle right up, it stopped humming. Calibrate seems to work. Those three positions are awfully close together. Those three ticks on the meter down in there. Let's see what this was going to have all that much of an effect. Oh, let's put it in the middle. Set function, switch to HK linkage. Alright, and so on. So, grab this. And multimeter. Kind of putting out AC or DC. It's, I'm going to guess it's AC first. Okay, it looks like the lowest is probably for the 2.3 volt filaments. 2.6. Yeah, some of the goofy ones, like some of the predictors, is like 2.35, I think, and then 2.68 for some of the other predictor CRTs. And there's some series strong sets that use a 4.5. Now it should be at 6.3. Yep. That's pretty close. I expect it to load, it'll go down. Yep, yeah, there's 8 volt CRTs. I guess there must be 12 and 13 and a half, but I don't think I've ever encountered those. So let's get this down to about 6.3. Alright, well, I'm going to pull out a CRT and hook it up and see what we get. Just occurred to me I had this plugged into a Variac earlier, not directly to the AC line. So I'm going to try that. Let's see if it reads higher. A little bit higher. A little bit. Looks more like it's reading. 112, 113 right now. Let's see what my meter has to say. That says 123, so yeah, this device is off a little bit. Alright, so I've pulled out a 10 BP4. Give that a shot. Pretty sure it's good. Alright. On. Calibrate zone. Filament is lit up. HK leakage. Excessive leakage, and you get a. I think lower is better. Yeah, so it looks like we have no leakage for HK. No leakage for G1, assuming this is working right. No cutoff quality activate. Hmm, still nothing. Let's cut off adjust. Right at the very end it does something. So there's a vernier on this knob, so you can turn it quite a bit. It's like a 10 to 1. So right at the end, the needle actually deflects. You're supposed to adjust for... Add to division for cutoff. For many tubes, the reading will be near zero. A full-scale meter reading indicates a shorted tube element. Turn cutoff control clockwise as necessary to advance the meter exactly two cutoff scale divisions above original reading. Alright, well, I 
I can't get that high, but at least I'm, I'm one tick above zero anyways. So if you can't get it, put this all the way back down and put grid two slide switch too high and try it again. That makes a difference. Let's get that at two. Now we throw this over. It should show the emissions. So not great, but this is a used CRT. Well, it's slowly climbing, just into the green. Then I can compare this to my, my CR70 and see how the readings, see how the readings uh, show on that. So climbing, so climbing. Now, if I had, I, fortunately, I don't think I have any handy that I know have shorts in them. Otherwise. Um, I can test some of this other functionality. So until I get the service manual, I can go through and verify all the functionality. I can't say for sure this is working, but it seems to be doing something for sure. The controls respond. It's definitely showing emissions. And now I'm comparing it to my Suncor CR70, which I know is fully functional. No shorts, no shorts. Cut off. And this too, can't get cut off control on the correct bias range, so I'm going to go up a notch. Then it gets more responsive, so that matches the other tester. And emissions into the green, similar position. So I think it is probably working correctly, but until I can get the manual, I won't know for sure. So if anybody has got a manual for an RCA WT509A, let me know. I will also put out the word online and hopefully you can track one down. In the meantime, that is going to be it for this unboxing video. I hope you enjoyed it.